Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and welcome to this 30-minute power session, Ask Me Anything Live. Sorry, I've just had a bath, I haven't done my hair, but you don't care. Um, you can ask me anything you like. Now, this is how these go. Every two weeks, I do an Ask Me Anything Live to my general uh, public page, this page. And um, anyone who isn't a supporter, um, I've just changed this actually, um, but you just need to donate some stars. You can choose your amount. Ask me a question. I'll answer it here live. Now, up until last week, anyone watching this Ask Me Anything live to my public page would have need to have donated stars to get their questions answered. Um, but from now on, anyone who's a supporter does not need to donate stars unless they choose to, to get their questions answered. Now, the reason I would ask you to donate stars so that I can answer your questions is that in historical lives gone by, I've had hundreds of questions. I can't get through to them all. They get lost down the feed. So, uh, you know, you just donating a few stars shows a bit of commitment. Um, I can see it because the stars come up in yellow. It makes the comment yellow. Um, and it's just a way for me to filter through um, and, and get all the questions asked that uh, people have donated stars for. But I just decided, because I'm soft, I keep just giving more away, I've decided that if you're a supporter, then you can ask your question anyway, um, and you don't ever need to donate stars. Now, if you want to be able to um, jump on my Ask Me Anything lives every Sunday at 8 p.m., and you want to be able to ask any question you like without donating stars, simply join the supporter program, which is bit.ly forward slash Rob Supporter with a capital R. That's bit.ly forward slash Rob Supporter with a capital R. Um, I've got 12 other bonuses um, and features in, in the supporter program. And we've just done an e and Shopify seven-day challenge and an e and Shopify two-and-a-half-hour course. And that's all part of the supporter program. So there we go. So I've had a question come in from John Paul. One other thing before we get going with the q and I'm going to do about half an hour on this, is I haven't done any one-to-one -one calls for stars for ages. Um, just because um, my uh, retirement um, and because I've had other things I've needed and wanted to invest my time into and because I don't just want to do calls all the time because I don't want to commoditize myself, make you feel I'm too available. Oh, I could get Rob for 15, 20 quid. 200, 2,000 stars and he's mine. Uh, 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 uh. Um, however, um, I actually have had a day come uh, free up um, tomorrow. So I have got a few calls I need to catch up on. Um, but once I've done that, I'm going to ring fence a couple of hours tomorrow to do one-to-one -one calls. So if you'd like a one-to-one -one call with me tomorrow, donate 2,000 stars on this video and I will call you up tomorrow, probably sometime early afternoon. So 2,000 stars, uh, it's only net $20 to me, uh, will get you a 15-minute one-to-one call with me tomorrow. Right, I can see questions and stars come in. So let me get onto these. I'm going to try and answer as many as I can in the short time that we have. And don't forget, if you're not a supporter, stars uh, and then a question. If you are a supporter, a question. And 2,000 stars will get you a one-to-one -one call with me tomorrow. I'm going to ring fence a couple of hours to do my calls. All right, so John Paul, how are you, my friend? When you made it to net worth of one million, how long until you were right? Um, that's nothing. And when did you stop counting? Okay, so I became a millionaire. Um, so net worth, i.e. Um, total assets minus total liabilities worth more than one million um, between the age of 30 and 31. And I kept counting then, get to 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, you know, plus, plus, plus. Um, I think I stopped counting probably about five. Um, it also depends what assets you put in, because for years I counted my um, net worth without my um, company's valuation in them. If I put my company's valuation in them, which could be 10 million, 20 million, it could be 30, 40 million. Who knows? Depends on the buyer. Um, I know what our um, net profit is at the moment, and I know if I work out a multiplier of that, what that will be. Um, so between five and ten, I probably stopped counting or being as concerned. Um, so, yeah, and I've found that, uh, John Paul, one million is not enough to retire. I know I've retired many times. Depends on your age, of course. If you're 21, 
Five million probably isn't enough. If you're 75, five million might be enough. Obviously, it depends on your lifestyle as well and all the things you want to do in your life. Um, but, but I found between five and tw- uh, 10 million is enough to retire on for most people. Um, you know, if you, if you think about, you can realistically expect about a 5% net return on cash. So if you had um, 10 million cash, that's, you can just about rely on about 500 grand a year net. Of course, that depends on your skill of investing and various other variables. Um, but that's roughly how I, I like to work it out for, um, you know, that's realistic and sustainable and scalable. Um, because what you also don't want is your capital to erode. So you might have five million, but if you chunk into that million, that five million as it goes down, your income goes down. Of course, you can leverage on the five million and get assets worth more than five million. Um, but yeah, it's just a million isn't enough anymore. It wasn't really your question, John Paul, but I've answered it. So I stopped counting probably about five, you know, in my mid thirties, maybe. Um, I mean, look, I still track my net worth, but I'm not obsessed about it. You don't hear me talk about my net worth at all. Um, you don't hear me talk about the millions unless someone asks. Um, and, you know, I really believe more and more now. People don't care how much money I've made and what I'm worth. People don't care um, how successful I am. They care if I'm useful to them. They care if I'm valuable. And people don't care if you're successful or rich. They care if you're useful and valuable. So I now focus on trying to be useful and valuable rather than successful and rich. And usually success and rich comes more when you're useful and valuable. Okay, right. So thank you, John Paul, for kicking us off. Carol, you have donated 2,000 stars for a call tomorrow. Anyone who wants a call for me tomorrow, I've got about a two-hour window. Um, Donate 2,000 stars, then private message me your mobile number. You must do that as well. Donate 2,000 stars, private message me your mobile number. Um, Chris has said, what's your plans for the old pound store? So um, we own B&M Home Stores, which used to be Marks and Spencer's, which is 85,000 square foot that we're developing into about 99 apartments. On the other side of the road, we bought Poundland, and we're going to um, rent the, you know, the commercial ground floor out, although we haven't got a tenant for it yet because we haven't developed it yet. And then we're probably going to develop it into about 35 apartments. So I'd have to talk to Mark and look at our latest plans. Um, but it's something like that. I, th- I don't know what the square footage is. I'm going to hazard a guess at 20, 20 to 20, yeah, 20, 25,000 square foot, something like that. Um, Matt, good evening. How are you? Good evening, Bavisha. OK, Connor, good afternoon. He gets up in the afternoon. So, um, Kurt, how are you doing? Oh, Connor, you're a lovely man. Thank you for your kind comment there. That's it. Bit.ly for slash Rob supporter. Um, it's bit.ly for slash Rob supporter with the capital R. If you never want to have to donate stars to get your question answered and you want those benefits and the e-com course and the e-com challenge. Marika, thank you for your stars and your question. Do you do any traditional advertising in your business? And if yes, what are the best ones that work well? Not really, no. Over the years, we have tested newspaper ads to source properties. We've I've tested PR. I had a PR agency for about three years. Tested um, magazine ads. um, Tested radio advertising. Spent lots of money on all of those. And they never really worked and they couldn't really be tracked. And give me that money now and I'd put it in Google ads and YouTube ads and Facebook ads any day of the week. Um, I think obviously, obviously, of course, it depends on your business model. Um, and I, I can use online a lot for my business model. So it seems to fit. Um, but the answer is not really any traditional advertising. And it hasn't really worked for us. For the training company, Marika, it might. Sourcing properties, I definitely do leafleting. Newspaper ads, I think that they do work quite well. And we've done quite a lot of those. So, yeah. All right, uh, John, Francis, um, Hannon. Hi, Rob. What you do really helps people. Thank you, John. And thank you. It's really kind of you to say. Carol, thank you for your 2,000 stars. Private message me. Your mobile number. We'll have that call tomorrow. For those of you just tuning in, for 2,000 stars only on this video. I haven't done them for ages. I won't do them for a good while. I've opened up a window of about two hours max tomorrow, and I've got some calls to make. But I'll take a few calls if you'd like to just donate 2,000 stars and then private message me your mobile. Katie, thank you for the stars and the question. 
I'm launching an online program. It's Wellbeing with the Business Accelerator. I'm planning to charge 150 quid. What do you think of the pricing? I think it's very low. They would get 15 videos from 15 experts. Uh, I can't see that you'd have a problem selling that unless you just don't have any reach because I think that that's, um, you know, very, it's at the lower end of the price points. I'm usually for online courses at the grand to 1500 grand best prices with discounts kind of level, um, sometimes up at two grand. Um, and then, of course, I've got the supporter program and the stars, which are obviously way lower in the tens of pounds. I like to give as much value as I can for free and tens of pounds as much as I can. I'm sure you'll agree I do loads of content. I have for years, twice a day. And then, of course, when it comes to deep dive learning or when you want to focus on one thing specific with me, public speaking, Shopify or e-commerce, you know, um, service accommodation, um, commercial property, then you do the deep dive course. That's how I've always um, planned my content. OK, so keep them coming in. Right. Every time a question comes in, it bumps them. OK, Marika, again, has hit me up with some more stars. Why do you think the valuers are downvaluing the property so much? What's the real agenda behind this, in your opinion? Who knows? I think maybe um, it's, it's usually down to um, bank risk aversion, you know, maybe fear of a falling market. Um, it, can, it can be sometimes that um, they're relatively low liquidity or, or, or don't have a massive appetite to lend. Um, so they're usually the three common reasons. Um, obviously, it depends on the property as well. You know, it might just be that the, they don't have, you don't have great comp comparables. Um, yeah, I, I should think most banks are not that bullish at the moment. Um, yeah. All right, Mansoor, how am I? I'm all good. Hi, Rosie. Nice to see you. Adam, hashtag supporters for life. Amen. Adam, Adam has just said supporter program keeps getting better and better. Thank you. It's a pleasure for you to be in it, Adam, and all of you to be in it. We have over 3,000 supporters now. Uh, I think we've got a great community going. Uh, I tend to find that many of the supporters become friends or, you know, they do partnerships together. They're often my more, most committed and um, successful students and clients and followers. So it's a real great thing to be part of. It's only ever uh, 3 49 a month because Facebook won't let me put it up. Otherwise, I would put it up. Um, yeah, thank you, Adam. That's really kind of you to say. Curtis just said, I just got my first rent to rent four bed HMO. Still need two, two tenants, but thankful all went well so far. Well done, Kurt. You're a legend. Good for you on getting on the property ladder. Uh, Stephen, my business has taken over Kitty Care site in Peterborough. Good site. Well, Stephen, my good friend, uh, Neville Wright, he owned that and um, obviously sold it to Morrison's and they didn't do as well as he did, did they? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. What's your business, Stephen? That'd be, it'd be interesting to know. Um, are you local? All right, Claire. Hi, Rob. What's your expected ROI on the Marks and Spencers? Um, Brit, um, the, uh, you put BMI conversion. It's, um, it's not BMI. It's, I don't know why it's gone out of my head. It's not BHS. <laughs> BNM, that's it. Uh, well, there's so many ways to measure ROI. Um, return on the capital invest, return on the capital value, which is also yield, return on the cash put in, return on the cash left in. Um, these are all different metrics. Um, we bought it for just under four. We sold the bottom retail part, actually, or four fifths of the bottom retail for just under four. So we were net in at virtually zero. We rented out for one fifth of the bottom floor to cross his homes for a 50 grand a year. Um, and then obviously we're developing and building up sometimes four stories, sometimes three stories, depending on which part of the sort of quadrangle we're building up on. Um, and I reckon it'll be worth anywhere between 18 and 20. We thought it might be as high as 22, but I'm not sure we'll be that high now. Let's say 19, 20 million and we'll keep it. Um, so if you measure money put in, we put in just under four, um, we'll spend about nine, um, borrow nine from the bank, nine million to do the development. So you're 13 in for, let's say, a 20 million value and let's say a four to 500 grand a year net profit to Mark and I. Um, but then money left in less than three point something million, I'd have thought, or less than four million. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of different metrics. 
Um, really, what Mark and I are looking at is what's the income um, because we had cap- capital to park anyway. We didn't need to strip the cash back out. We actually, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do anything better with the cash. I'd have probably just bought Lamborghinis and, and Patek Philippe's probably and upgraded my hi-fi system even more and bought another house that I don't need. Um, so, yeah. It doesn't quite answer the question, but it's a different answer because it's not how we're measuring this one. If it was a single let, we'd measure it on yield. Well, well, the quality of the acquisition would be on yield. And we might um, we we might do return on capital employed, which would be the cash left in. Okay, right. So John Paul wants a call tomorrow. He's just donated 2000 stars. Ping me your number again, John, although I should, I should have saved it, really, shouldn't I? Uh, I'll give you a call tomorrow afternoon, something like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just doing a little thing tonight only just because I've had a day free. I, I normally have a mastermind meeting, but I've, I've had the diary cleared. So I've got about nine or ten calls to catch up on. I'm going to do them. So there's one or two people on here, I think, are due a call. Or you've still got to give, there's a few people that are due a call, but haven't given me their mobile number. Need the mobile number. Um, but if you want to call with me tomorrow, 15 minute one to one, which I mean, look, people pay 40,000 pounds to be mentored by me for the year. So 2000 stars is just um, 20 net dollars. Sarah said, I'm waiting patiently for your email on the course. Did you reply to me with your email address, Sarah? I did reply to you on that one. Um, I would sort that out tomorrow. Adam, I saw a video saying it was challenging filling live mastermind seats. Have you thought of selling them to people like me that can't commit to um, six metres but could stay two metres? Um, which video was that, Adam? Was it one of my videos? You'd have to give me a bit more clue as to what you're referring to. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we um, we opened all the masterminds back up, obviously, with social distancing measures in place. And people just weren't turning up, no matter all the effort and expense we were putting in. You know, I think there's a lot of uncertainty again, isn't there? So um, we've gone back to de- delivering most of them online until we can do them face to face again. And what we're doing for all of our clients that have already paid for masterminds is um, any online sessions where we're forced to do them online or we've decided to, um, we're actually giving them free. So um, we're actually launching a couple of mastermind places. We're opening a couple of um, masterminds. And um, if, if someone uh, joins immediately, they can get all of the online ones free and then they ha- only pay for their um, months when they turn up. So um, I'm trying to do my bit. We are doing our bit as a company to you know, offer value and support to our community. We've delivered over 2,000 masterminds or one-to-one sessions through my company at our own expense. You know, so there's the occasional moaner, isn't there? Oh, I tried to get a refund. I couldn't get a refund, you know, you know. Complain that as even though we didn't break our terms and conditions and they might have been on the program for a long, long time. And it's very easy for people to criticise. But over 2,000 um, masterminding or mentoring or one-to-one um, sessions for our, our clients, which you know cost about £650 each, we've delivered for free as a way to give back and to support our community through this lockdown. And I probably didn't talk about that enough or um, champion ourselves enough on that because... I don't ever like people to think that I'm coming across as bragging, but that's not bragging because that's a fact. And like I said, we're going to open a couple of masterminds coming soon. And while someone will have to, you know, um, join and commit, um, if we're locked down for like another six months or people don't want to leave their house for six months, then they'll get six months free mastermind sessions with us until, um, you know, they can come face to face. All right, let's have a look. Um, David, how are you, David? Went to Stilton and Peterborough last week. Short break, found Peterborough, a lovely city. There's a pub in Stilton for sale if you're interested. Stilton is a little bit villagey for us. We like more central Peterborough. I know Stilton quite well. Um, is it the Bell that's for sale in Stilton, David? Um, we have bought pubs and turned them into HMOs, but that would just be a little bit out of our catchment. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, if you walked in the centre of Peterborough, you probably would have the biggest crane you can see on the skyline is the, the one that we're uh, developing um, B&M Home Stores building, Old Marks and Spencer's building. OK, Sharon has said, join Expert Speaker Revolution and Expert Speaker Academy to improve speaking skills. Learn the system, then put your own stamp on it. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, if anyone is interested in any training or anything that we do, I don't really... 
use my own profile to promote our courses, but we have the biggest property training company in the UK and we have a business and personal development training company. So if you want to learn public speaking or podcasting or, you know, to be really good on social media um, or e-com, Shopify, you want to develop extra income streams, um, this, what, what better time to learn than, you know, maybe a time to reinvent yourself. Um, talking about reinvent yourself, my book with Gerald, Reinvent Yourself, is the, the book launch has just been delayed 10 days just because we've got a final edit to do. But I think it's coming out 3rd of December. Watch this space. 3rd of December, Reinvent Yourself, the brand new book with Gerald Ratner and myself. All right, so Hina's on the um, e-commerce mastermind. Best money she's ever spent. Thank you, Hina. Uh, let's have a look. John Paul, what's your biggest regret mistake in business and how quickly did you get over it? I get asked this a lot. I don't have many regrets. I'm not really a guy for regret. I think I must be pretty good at moving on from it. You know, I, I do feel pain and emotion in the moment. Of course, I'm human. But I think I can usually see the lesson or move on from it, accept it as part of the journey. So I mean, some of my mistakes have ended up being, you know, really, really big wins for us. Any regrets? Um, I mean, look, I teach my team to act fast. I teach them that speed and agility are vital right now. So anything where I've laboured or procrastinated um, and could have acted quicker, I, w- I would kick myself for that. Um, I think if Mark were on this live with me and we had the chance to buy a, a, a big sort of theatre cinema building in Peterborough, it's called the Broadway Theatre. We could have done so much with it. It's a really good location. And um, I think Mark would uh, agree with me when I said, you know, he was he, he offered a bit low. He's has been known to offer low. He can be a bit tight sometimes. Um, and, but you know, that's good because he's careful as well and he doesn't lose money, but sometimes he loses opportunities. And, um, the, the guy who, who, who ended up bought it, buying it, didn't pay much more than, than we offered and we could have paid a lot more. So maybe, you know, losing that building, that might've been a bit of a regret. Um, but yeah, not really any others. I, I can't think of any. So, um, I mean, you know, look, I, I tend to make um, fairly frequent but small mistakes because I'm doing things quickly and always sort of testing live on the go. Um, and I think that has merits. Of course, there's downsides. Lots of little mistakes has downsides, of course. But it's better than making really massive ones. I mean, really, my, I suppose my biggest regret is not getting into property sooner, not starting my own business sooner. I mean, I started when I was, what, 26, 27 but I had aspirations for many years to do that and, and had fear and um, never and didn't have confidence. So that's probably actually my biggest regret or mistake is not starting earlier because I'm 41 now um, and I could have been further down the line and more successful and helped more people had I started earlier and I had the chance to. Okay, will reinvent yourself beyond Audible as well? It will, but not for a few months. We're launching the Amazon paperback copy, I think 3rd of December. Uh, we've got some beautiful bonuses as well. Um, and actually, I'm going to tell you a little story about this or a little secret. Um, I have a contract with my publisher, Sashet, who are the second biggest publishers in the world. So I'm very proud to be um, partnering with them. Um, and in my contract, I have to give them first refusal on any books I might write. Um, you know, obviously they're my publisher and they would want me the chance to publish my books. And I offered them um, op- uh, the book um, Reinvent Yourself that I co-wrote with Gerald Ratner uh, and they declined it. They didn't really think it was a kind of book that they'd want to publish or that was sort of right for the moment. And I can't remember if that was just before the lockdown. I think it probably was. But now, I mean, what better concept and what better book right now than reinvent yourself? I mean, if you can't reinvent yourself, you're going to be um, disrupted dramatically by COVID, by the market, by a recession, by a competitor. And I think you need the agility and the ability to reinvent yourself continually. It's no longer one job, one career, one pension um, anymore. The world has changed. So I think that this book is very timely. 3rd of December, put it in your diary because we've got some sweet bonuses coming out that day as well. Connor, do you regret not buying watches from the 70s? Yeah, I regret, I regret not buying a load of Rolex Daytonas in the 1970s. Yes, of course. But in the 1970s, I was one to 10 years old. So I wasn't quite in the watch buying mode then. 
All right. Do If you have any more questions, hit me up with a few stars. Um, if you're a supporter, you don't have to donate stars anymore. But if you're not, donate some stars. Um, or if you just want to donate stars because, you know, you want to, to show some gratitude, I'm always open to that. I, re- I reinvest all my star money into the development of the brand, the videos, the content, etc. Um, and 2,000 stars gets you a call with me tomorrow. I'm just doing a, a, a small number of those. I've just had my day cleared. Um, Sam, how are you, Sam? I would like Andy to write a book. How does he start? Um, well, you've got to think about the concept and get a good concept. Once you've got that, you could get you create a working title, then you break it down into to segments um, and then sem- like the segments within the segments of the chapters. What I find is getting a, a big block of post-it notes and just literally having a coffee or putting some music on and just getting in the mode and for two hours, just literally brain dumping, just writing anything on these post-it notes, right stick, right stick, right stick, right stick, right stick, whether it's a strategy, a tactic, a concept or a detail, um, a model, a how-to, a problem, a solution, a challenge, you know, whatever, um, and just write it all down, just keep chucking them, chucking them, chucking them, chucking them, chucking them, and then you stick them all over a wall, and then you can, you you put them into sections by sticking them in long um, vertical rows, and those, so because you know when things are um, like in groups, you can group them together. So with commercial property, it might be acquisition, funding. Um, it might be development. It might be snagging. It might be exit strategies. It might be um, different ways to raise finance. And you've got you know chapters, sections there. Um, so that's how I would start. And um, we, I do run a, a book writing boot camp once a year. Which if you really want Andy to properly write the book. Um, then get him on that. Um, but obviously had to postpone this year because of a bloody COVID. How did the e-com course with Rich go, Rob? In a circle field? Yeah, it's been mental, Lauren. Mental. Um, absolutely mental. I think people can see the opportunity. Obviously, e-commerce is the, probably one of the best ways to make money right now. I think if you're not making money online, you're, you're not with the 21st century and you're not properly reacting to COVID and the situation. And I think it's, you know, the only guaranteed way to make income. Nothing is guaranteed, of course, but if we get locked down, what can you do? Nothing. You need, you, you, you can't open a shop. Um, you can't deliver. Well, you can deliver via Amazon and, um, and other e-commerce sites. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great time. So I'm getting quite a lot of comments about e-commerce. If any of you are interested in getting yourself trained up on e-commerce, uh, Shopify, especially, cause we think that, um, it's just a bit less saturated than Amazon private message me. Um, yeah, Adam said, I have a book writing bubble. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, let's have a look. Jane, thank you for the stars. Let me find your question. If you had money but no job, what would you invest in? It depends how much, Jane. Um, so Mark, my business partner, Mark Homer, and I did a series. Um, well, actually, we were mid through it. Um, how to invest five grand, how to invest 10 grand, how to invest 25 grand, how to invest 50 grand. Tomorrow is how to invest 100 grand. Then it's 250, 500, and then it's lower, no money down. So it all depends how much you've got. If you've got five grand or 50 grand or 500 grand, it'd be a very different strategy on how I'd invest that. Um, uh, yeah, so maybe you just want to let me know. Oh, well, you might not want to let me know publicly. You might want to let me know privately. Um, Cod has never been busier in this lockdown. Good for you, my friend. Uh, I wish you all the best. In fact, everyone who follows me, I just wish you success. I hope that you are doing really well. I am not the sort of person that, um, you know, gets jealous or envious of people's success. I, I never do. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I should be doing more and it'll motivate me. But I just really love it when other people are successful. I admire and respect people who are successful. I know that they've made big sacrifice to get there and they've got things that I can learn. So I love it when you all share your results. And I just want all of you to be wildly successful. People are often asking me, hey, Rob, what can I do for you? Because you do loads of videos. You do loads of calls for stars. You do your stuff for World Mental Health Day. You've got your foundation. You do shit loads of content. Well, look, the best, the, the best thing you could do is go out and be fucking successful. That's the best thing because, you know, obviously that, that karma is going to come back to me. Um, but sharing any of my work or having a chance to leave a review or donate some stars, you know, that would also be good. Deanna's asked, if you were starting over as an entrepreneur again, would you still have started in property or e-commerce? I'd probably do um, e-commerce stroke Shopify about half my time. 
And then I'd probably do um, property buying and property deal packaging split the other half of my time. That's probably what I would do. Hey, look, I, I can't avoid property. I love property. I wouldn't want to avoid property. I always want to be in property. Um, and, you know, there are quite a few ways to acquire property low and no money down. I did it. It's proven. You know, when people say, oh, no money down, you can't do it. It's impossible. No, no, no. What they mean is they don't know how. That's all they mean. Um, but yeah, I probably would spend a good amount of my time generating money online because that's where all the money is. That's where the markets are. Um, you know, with Connor, for example, who's a watchmaker. OK, he's going to make his watches from home. Um, but, uh, you know, it's probably easier for him to sell them online. And if he can't transact online, how's he going to sell them? So, yeah. Any big plans for 2021? Um, scaling our um, online courses to be global. Uh, we're doing, um, we're just launching a training event in Hong Kong. I want to be in another four or five continents in 2021. I wanted to be in them, sorry, four or five countries, continents. I was getting a bit ahead of myself there. Calm down, Rob, back into balance. Continents, look at me. Um, yeah, I'm going to be the first guy to run property courses on the moon, motherfucker. Uh, yes, yeah, so I want to be in another four or five countries. I mean, look, we are in many countries. My podcast is downloaded in over 200 countries, but specifically run live courses in other countries, not just sell online courses in other countries, actually live courses. Now, of course, with um, COVID, they would be live streamed. But yeah, I want to be in at least four or five new countries next year. I've got a lot of books that uh, I'm, I'm um, writing at the moment. So uh, Reinvent Yourself comes out December 3rd. I think it's the 3rd. Opportunity is now finished. My new book with my publisher, that'll be out early next year. I'm also writing Residual Income. Um, I think there might be one more. I, I forget. I read so many books. Has anyone donated stars and not had their question answered? Um, so Jane's just donated some more stars. So if you had an e-commerce business, what would you sell? I would sell whatever's trending and whatever is um, in demand, you know, I, I wouldn't be fussy about selling my own. Oh, I, I've made these beautiful face creams from extra virgin olives squeezed by virgins. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I, I would sell what is trending and, and, and what sells the best. I think a big mistake people make is they want to sell products they love rather than products that sell. Um, of course, I do information based training, don't I? So, um, you know, I, I'll sell anywhere between 12 and 20 um, million pounds worth of courses and information and masterminds and mentoring per year. So I would start I would do that again for sure, because that's obviously worked for me really well. I think I've sold 120 million pounds plus of um, in, information. So information, I think, is a great business model to sell. Um, lower overhead, uh, you know, less friction, no stock. Um, less moving parts. You can start quicker. Of course, you have to have the education and the experience, of course. Don't, you know, sell information on something you don't know anything about. But um, I think it's a fantastic business model. All right. Have you got your kids a cat yet or are you still depriving them? I've got a dog who's a Westie, Connor. So there's no way we're having a cat in this house because that would be a dead cat. <laughs> Um, Alison has said, I'm looking well. Ah, oh, thank you. I put my moisturiser on and then I put my oil on top of my moisturiser. And I had a shower and I pampered myself. And I haven't put the, um, the product in my hair. So I'm very au, au naturel today. So thank you. I love you. <laughs> All right. Rosie just sold shop and flat, thinking to try and get planning permission for a new build buy another property. Very difficult to get planning permission in my area. If you're quite new to property, I probably wouldn't start by building. I'd start by buying to let and then moving up to development a bit later because I think there's a lot more moving parts and it's a lot more difficult. So that would be my advice. All right. Is rent to rent a genuine business strategy? Yes. I would never teach anything that isn't. Richard, this question just came to me after watching a few of your disruptive entrepreneur episodes. Out of all the people you've interviewed, who appeals to you the most as a business partner? I would say David McCourt, um, because we've got this good rapport. Um, he's a billionaire. Um, he's inquisitive. I've interviewed him twice now. He would be good. I really like Reggie Yates. I really like Barry Hearn. 
you know, in terms of feeling good rapport with them. So that's always important to me. But hey, I should probably pick a billionaire, shouldn't I? There you go, there's three. I mean, by the way, Richard, there'll be loads. And I, I'd have forgotten. I mean, I've interviewed well over 100 really good guests. Um, Jordan Peterson, he'd be, he, I mean, he's got a massive brand, doesn't he? And he's very, you know, really smart. Um, if you could get the right business model and leverage his platform, he'd be really good. And Bavisha said, you doing three videos a day in the lockdown was so much appreciated. It's my pleasure. Whatever I can do to give back to you guys, it's my pleasure. So if you ever have any requests, private message me or just put it in the comments and ask me. It's always my pleasure to deliver content for you. Um, and, and I often do content that you ask for. So please don't be shy in asking. What are you struggling with? What's a challenge that you um, haven't yet overcome? What, you know, what would you like to figure out? What have you not yet mastered? Um, let me um, help you. Just ask away. Do you think property prices will drop next year? Yeah, I would have thought so. I would have thought so, yeah. I mean, you, you can't say for sure. I don't think anyone expected them to go up, did they? But they did. They're, I think they'll definitely come down. There's a correction due for sure. Even without COVID, we're 12 years since the last one. I can't say when because I think most people can't predict when. Um, but yeah, I, I would have thought at least back in the next year that it will start. I can't, I'd be amazed that um, it wouldn't. Um, yeah, about the business partner thing. I'm already business partners with Mark Homer and he is obviously the perfect business partner. So um, it was just, I was just asked about um, guests on my podcast. Um, Nick has asked, where'd you get your business opportunity leads from? Um, you need to donate stars if you want to ask questions and you're not a supporter. I'm a softie, so I'll answer that one. But we do CPA, list rentals, joint ventures. We do Facebook ads, Google ads, Amazon ads, YouTube ads. Um, we have Facebook groups, Facebook pages, we boost posts, um, we do uh, webinars, oh, we've got loads of lead generation strategies, there's about 11 there, Stu, how are you doing, good to see you on a live, I hope you're well my friend, Stu and I have been mates for, when was it we were at the caravan park, Stu, 23 years ago? I think I was 18. Can't remember any of it. We all got so drunk all the time. 23 years, Stu. Wow. Um, let's have a look. Wayne, how are you, my friend? Um, how often do you reply to DMs? I've sent several, particularly during Mental Health Week, as well as posts, but haven't had a reply from you. Um, well, there's a few things here, Wayne. I try and reply to as many as I can, and I genuinely do. But the problem now is, um, if I'm not a friend with someone... Um, messages go into a filtered inbox and they're, I, I, you, they're really hard to view. I find it hard to find them. They've, um, they just block them, whereas they just, you just used to be able to click a tab and there they all were. Um, so mostly now, if I'm not connected with friends, I can't see their messages. Um, you know, my, my VA agent legend guy who helps out, he'll go in maybe, you know, once every few days and go through them all. Um, in, uh, I know that you asked for a call, but I, um, I, I, I don't do calls unless I sort of make a promotion. Um, just because otherwise if I just said, oh yeah, I'll do a call anytime. I'd just be inundated and I'd be doing that full time. And I, I'm very grateful to do it, Wayne. Don't get me wrong. And if you want to donate 2000 stars now, I can call you tomorrow. Um, because I'm just doing that, a, a little offer of that on this live, um, yeah, and then with my Facebook page, I just get so many messages, they just get lost. So my Facebook profile, I ha I'd probably get a, um, a handleable amount of messages. But like I said, anyone who's not a friend, they just go into, um, you know, a, a filtered folder that you can't see. On my page, there's ju they just get, they're just so many and I just can't really keep up with them all. I always knew that one day I wouldn't be able to keep up with all the messages. For years, I've been replying to every message unless someone's really rude or obnoxious or entitled or the messages like war and peace or whatever. Um, and as you know, I retired recently and I've been careful trying to do the self-care a bit better. Um, the problem as well is when you reply to someone, then you get loads of replies back. Um, it's not that I'm not grateful to be messaged. Um, but if you want to call tomorrow, Wayne, donate 2,000 stars, I'll give you a ring. Um, and anyone else, last chance, um, if you want to chat with me tomorrow, donate 2,000 stars. I'm, I've freed up a bit of time because I had a, my diary was cleared from a, a mastermind I was supposed to be at. Um, yeah, 
There you go. Do you think commercial property will come down too? Yeah, I think there's a lot of empty units. I think that will definitely come down. Um, let's have a look. I just want to check. I've done. Everyone who's donated stars, have you got your questions answered? Peter said, me too. I really think without Rob, I would have never started my own business. Rob's on my gratitude list for life. Thank you, Peter. That's really lovely. I don't know if any of you saw the post I put on my Facebook page with the message that someone sent me. Honestly, these messages make me re um, feel very grateful back um, and just spur me on to do more good work. So, um, yeah. Connor has said, have you really retired, though? Yes, I was very clear in my explanation. Most people don't believe me, but yes. I, I believe you don't retire and die. Well, hopefully you don't. I believe you retire and do something else. So I was never retiring to do nothing. I was retiring to do something else. So what I was retiring from was operation involvement in my training companies. So therefore, what I was retiring to is more family time, more me time, more better self-care, um, doing things that I like to do, not just for the sake of my company or my clients or my followers, doing more of my own personal brand, doing more podcast interviews, getting more sponsors for my um, my brands and all these kind of things and meeting more cool, interesting people. I went out for dinner with Jake Wood last night. We had a great time. Um, you know, Jake from um, Max Branning from EastEnders, he's become a really good friend. So me and my wife went out for dinner with him and... Um, his wife, we had a lovely time. No photos because I got bollocked for social distancing rules. <sighs> but um, yeah, so I'm just trying to do more. I'm, I'm, I'm really into music. I love vinyl. I love listening to music. So I've been back into collecting my, build, developing, building up my hi-fi system and collecting my vinyl. And I just love sitting down and putting a vinyl on, just really getting involved in the music. Enjoying my cars a bit more because I didn't drive them through lockdown. I'm doing the gym every day. Been working out loads, spent loads of time with my um, kids. My wife and I just went away um, over the weekend. More time to think, more time to add value to you all, more time with sort of, you know, strategy and bigger picture stuff that's fun. So, yeah, so that's what I retired to from operational involvement in my training companies. Like Jace has just said here, a new definition of re retirement. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, I, I think I quoted myself. Um, retirement isn't doing nothing, it's doing something else. And even if people sit on the beach and drink pina coladas and go on cruises, they're still doing something else. I've retired five times now. So I've had a few weeks of doing nothing and I hated it. So I'm very clear, retirement for me is not doing nothing. It's doing different stuff. Omar, I said, Rob, I reckon your best years are ahead of you, not behind you. I hope so, Omar. I believe that to be true as well. I'm still only 41. There's a lot of life left in this old bastard. Um, yeah, I feel like my foundation can make a massive, bigger, deeper impact. I've got way more books to write than I've already written. Um, you know, way more people to impact and reach. Um, way more content. In I mean, if I go till I'm like 95, doing two videos a day, probably on average, and all the content, I mean, bloody hell, I'm going to have a lot of people pissed off with me. Um, Deanne has said, are you going to do more walk about lives in Peterborough? Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. We'll see. They seem to go down quite well. All right, cool. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. Final chance then. If you want to call with me tomorrow, um, because I've had my diary cleared, I was supposed to be doing a mastermind. Donate 2,000 stars right now. Private message me your mobile and I'll call you tomorrow. I'm going to have about a two-hour window for my calls. Um, I won't be able to do them any other day, I'm afraid, because... Um, I've got, um, tomorrow and w I've got tomorrow and Wednesday completely off doing stuff with my family. Um, sorry. Yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday. So 2000 stars, private message me and, um, we'll have a call if you want it tomorrow. And there's a few people that have been waiting for a call on me because I've just got a bit behind on those. Um, you built a, you need to private message me your mobile and B, I'll catch up with them tomorrow. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following my work. Really grateful to you. Keep on keeping on. Um, you know, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. It'll pay off in the end. Remember when you plant a seed, you don't get the tree the next day. So just stay patient, stay focused, stay, um, you know, make sure that you're leveraging online and um, you're um, figuring out how to bring in these multiple streams of, of income online um, because it really is the place to be. I believe the two best business models right now are uh, um, Shopify, um, you know, online e-commerce, Stroke, anything that you can sell online. For me, I sell information online, but 
And there's many products and services you could sell. So getting into Shopify, Amazon or um, information based business and marketing. Um, and then I think there's going to be lots of companies that are going to come out across really cheap um, in the next few um, months. I just think that how many retail businesses, how many traditional businesses are, are likely to go bust. And I think you're going to be able to acquire lots of businesses very cheaply. And these are the two things I'm really going to get behind. Keep your eye out because in the next few days, I'm going to be doing content on this stuff. Um, um, I'm going to uh, do a split screen live discussion with Jonathan J tomorrow. He's mentoring me on acquiring businesses. Mark and I are trying to buy letting agencies and training companies. And we've acquired um, some assets in training companies um, over the last few months. I've got lots of news on that that I can't tell you right now because it's not yet public knowledge. But we're walking the walk and doing this. So next few days, keep your eye out because there'll be loads on acquiring businesses, low and no money down. Then you don't have to do all the startup stuff. You just jump years ahead. Uh, and then also um, e-com, Shopify and making money online. Final question then from um, Mike. Rob, where do you get your energy from? Actually, um, I have a bit of a contrarian view on this. Because a lot of people would say, oh, well, you know, you get your energy from food, you get your energy from sleep, um, you get your energy from exercise. And whilst, of course, I agree with those things, you know, you get your energy from being in, out, in outdoors and breathing good air and, you know, getting the sun on your face. I think all of those things were, I mean, obviously, scientifically proven to give energy. But I'm going to counter all of those to give you something that I think gives you even more energy than all of those. Passion. So loving what you do and doing what you love. So um, just give me a little thumbs up or a heart or something in answer to this question if you agree. Have you ever fallen in love with doing something so much, a passion, a profession, a vocation or a vacation, that A, time stood still, and B, you didn't eat for ages or didn't drink water for ages or didn't sleep for ages because you were so in it. You were just so in the zone. You were so loving what you were doing. I can see hearts coming up all over the place here. So, I mean, I think you could have only had a few hours sleep, but like Connor, Connor loves watches. He's just, it, I mean, Connor's a lovely man, but he's pretty one dimensional. He's watching, no, he's naturally, he's two dimensional. Watch his cats, watch his cats, watch his cats, watch his cats. But Connor works through the night making his watches because he loves watches. And Connor's like three, four, five in the morning. Who needs sleep? Because he loves watches. He's probably not eating that well, probably not drinking enough water, not because he doesn't mean to, but because he's so in deep work focused in flow, as they say. And this isn't talked about much. This is where I get my energy from. I don't always eat mega healthy. All right, I'm doing a lot of um, working out at the moment, but I don't always do a lot of working out. I don't always sleep the best, although, you know, usually okay. Um, yeah, of course, a coffee buzz, you know, really, really, really um, can help. Um, Con Connor has said here, when he's designing one of his models, he didn't eat or sleep for two days. Now, I'm not recommending that before I get criticised by my haters. I'm just saying that when you find something you love to do, you're in flow, you're on mission, you've got a vision you're clearly working towards. I'm not saying it won't be challenging and I'm not saying it'll be easy, but I'm saying, you know, you're meant to do it. You feel like this is me and I'm moving forward. This is who I am. I identify with this. I feel valuable and useful. That gives you the most energy out of anything. And that's where I'll get mine from. Oh, Ralph's just opened the door. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I love you all. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.